Yetis, welcome back from the break. We have got a special surprise for today's pod before we go into the weekend. Earlier this week, we covered the most talked about, most controversial, most bold company in artificial intelligence, Friend, the AI companion you wear around your neck. We covered it on Tuesday. It's the viral product of the moment, the $129 wearable AI necklace that listens to you like it's your buddy, Timmy. And we covered it in their latest viral news this week on Tuesday. And we're lucky enough to be welcoming to the show the founder of that company, friend. His name is Avi Schiffman. Avi! Welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Love Welcome it. to T-Boy. So, Avi, we covered your first viral moment last year oh, when yeah. you acquired the website domain friend.com and then published that video of that woman hiking, <laughs> talking to her necklace. <laughs> yeah. Right. That kind of kicked the whole thing off. It seems that that video changed all of startup culture because now everyone's making these cinematic ass videos, you know? <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. By the <laughs> way, Jack, memo, that, that's on the docket for 2026. I think that's over now. You know, like you got to go do something else original by now. It's like I see those every Every single day there's another startup and they copy so many little details like even the stripe checkout link thing i was the first to do yeah. that and it's like guys we just it's not even good for conversion. Like, do something better. All right, so Jack, cancel our plans. We're not doing the viral video, actually. <laughs> We're not going to do it. Avi, earlier this week, we covered your latest viral moment, which was the epic subway advertising campaign you did in New York City, which pretty quickly got vandalized with some graffiti at the West 4th Street station. Yeah. So, Avi... Thank you for joining the show. We're going to cover as much as we can with you in the next seven minutes. But first, friend, it is the most controversial product in AI right now. Some say a real-life version of her voiced by Scarlett Johansson from the movie. Nick and I say it's Tamagotchi, but in real life with a brain. How would you describe the product you just launched? I, you know, I just think it's a new kind of companion. You know, people don't buy a dog because they have low self-esteem. And I don't think a product like Friend is just going to be for, for lonely depressed people. I think um, it's not a relationship that's replacing anyone in your life. I don't think anyone has a friend that's listening to them 24-7 um, that they can talk to forever, that has perfect memory. Um, I, I think it's it's going to be a great addition. We'll see what happens um, in terms of how, how society will adapt to that. Avi, what made you launch this product? Was there a personal experience or did you just see a market opportunity? Originally, I started working on this company in May of 2023. And I was interested in the idea of providing more context to a language model about your day. I thought it would, you know, be easier to use, essentially, if you don't have to explain everything to it. That was the original idea. And it was called Tab. Um, but I was on a work trip in uh, in Tokyo. And I was there alone in one of those dumbass little pods and, you know, big ass skyscrapers. <laughs> and I was just looking at the assistant. And I, I just felt like it could be uh, like, I was just so lonely. And I, I wished it was more of like a traveling companion that really felt like it was just going around, uh, you know, Japan with me. And um, I went around a bunch of toy museums and was pretty interested in like Tamagotchis. And so I, I pivoted the same exact hardware product to, uh, to be more of just like a friend. Um, and I think that's a much simpler use case that's production ready right now. You know, the, the only thing that's production ready with language models right now is that they're fun to talk to. And for some people, they form a relationship with that. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's ready right now. I think a lot of these other AI hardware products and even what I was originally working on require like 100% accuracy with with what's going on and, and you know if you're using it for like a business situation and i just don't think the tech is ready for that yet i, I also think that this you know you're not going to change the world that much if you make it slightly easier to order a pizza i think the <laughs> when you look at like 2025 to 2035 i think like the, the concept of digital relationships will be by far the most culturally relevant and impactful and i think that deserves then to be done in such an entertaining way. Now, Avi, I see you're wearing the friend around your neck right now. Oh, yeah. Did it just send you a message and say, great pitch, that was awesome? <laughs> you might, might have to. Maybe I'll ask it. <laughs> Quick follow-up, Avi, I guess because you're running an AI company, can you prove you are AI? You are not AI right now. No, I can't prove that you're not one either. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, yeah, we're going to publish this full interview on YouTube if you want to see the friend device that he's wearing like a necklace right now. Now, Avi, you mentioned what the world would look like in 2035. It's going to be different. Can you go into a little more depth? Like, how are you envisioning that world? Are we all going to be wearing an AI friend device? I think, like, everyone is always yapping about how much better the world would be if everyone had a therapist, you know, everyone was journaling and everything like that. And I think you can kind of think of a product like friend, like a living journal. You know, it's it's one thing to write things down, but that's pretty abstract. I think it's a lot easier to just talk to somebody um, and have them remember everything you say. And I think if everyone had that kind of relationship in their life, I really think that would be um, a fantastic world. And I really don't see that as dystopian. I think a lot of people view something like the ad campaign we're doing right now as like controversy marketing and all these things. But like, I think that's more so a projection that people put onto it. 
Um, I, I really think it'll be uh, the most positive use case of technology over the next decade. Oh, we're, we want to get into that ad campaign you just did. But, but first, Jack, I got I a quick follow-up on that. Avi, you're describing that we're all going to have this, and it's and it's a nice vision. I, you know, we hadn't heard this angle on it of like replacing a journal, for example, or being something that you know can solve a loneliness issue potentially. Sure, but it, is there any potential cost to regular friendships? Like, is there a risk that this is replacing friendships that you'd otherwise be having with real people, or do you see it as purely additive? I mean, I just. You don't only have one friend. No one here does. I think it's just going to be an, an addition. I think if one of your five closest friends was an AI, that would is kind of the future I believe in. And so, okay, maybe we're replacing one of those five. But like, I think, you know, when you're a kid, you don't get to choose who your friends are. You're basically friends with whoever you sit next to in class or whoever your parents let you hang out with. And I think social media was the first step in this concept of like personalized relationships where you get to be a lot more specific of, of who you hang out with. And I think the promise of, of AI companionship is taking that to the next level where you can really have the, like a hyper-personalized relationship. And I think that's going to be a good thing for a lot of people. Well, based off that social media context you just shared, would there be a world where the friend devices communicate with each other and like network on your behalf? You know, I thought about it. I thought about it. Got to keep it simple and single player for now. But I think it'd be kind of like Nintendo Street Pass, you know, I think that would be <laughs> But uh Maybe one day. So Avi, you designed these subway ads yourself on Figma or Canva. Yeah. And you basically said friend and then defined it like someone who listens to you. And then you showed the pendant. And you left lots of white space, which some people graffitied over, which is typical, by the way, for any New York City subway ad. Is that the reaction you were expecting or hoping for? Generate some controversy. Biggest ad campaign of all time on a subway. A million bucks spent, and you get graffitied on in the first day. <laughs> it's it's cheaper than you thought, right? Um, I think that the main <laughs> the main goal of the campaign is to just redefine what a friend is or or could be, and I think that's that's something that can't just come from one singular voice. I think you have to allow you know the whole the whole city to be able to join in on that social commentary, um, and I think that's that's proving to be you know very successful. I think uh, you know no one no one's no one's critiquing if it'll work or if it won't work. I think people are angry that it actually is real right now. Um, and I think that's that's going to be quite interesting uh, in the future. I, I just want to follow up on Jack's question, though. Did you, because you, and this is rare, as the co-founder of the company, as the founder of the company, as the CEO of the company, you designed the subway ads. Did, did you yeah. strategically make it so that they could be drawn on because there is that white space? Of course, of course. That's <laughs> all, it's all according to plan. I mean, it's all, it's all timed perfectly. We're like, for the last, so the ads started getting put up August 25th. And they've been up for then a whole month. Uh, and then only just a couple of days ago, do we have the entirety of West 4th Street. That's the, the entire station is just friend ads, which then turns, you know, everything that's been kind of going on a little subtly behind the scenes. Now you have a specific destination to go and, and, and not only visit it, but also then, you know, graffiti and everything like that. But, you know, you've got those two tunnels and it becomes like a, I want it to be an international destination. Like you come to New York City just to see these these tunnels of of social commentary. And I think I'm very inspired by like the gates, which was like a big exhibit in New York from like 20 years ago. Oh yeah, the Orange Gates in the Central Park. Right. It it, it becomes like a, a an international destination, and I think that's that's just entertaining and fun. Avi, can you share how much fundraising your company has done? We raised a little over seven million. So by our count, you spent 1.8 million dollars on the website, one million dollars on the subway advertising campaign, probably another million or two on engineers. How did you build a hardware tech device that runs artificial intelligence with such a small amount of capital? I just have a good team and I, you know, just, just did a, we just actually wanted to make something real. And I think if you do want to do that, you know, you don't go and raise a hundred billion dollars and hire the entire, you know, quarter of Apple. Um, (laughs) I think you just, you just keep it focused and you, you know, the, the, the product is not a V1 or an MVP. Like you can look in every detail of the packaging to the product, to the app. It is as polished as I could make it for July 30th. I mean, even even the launch date was, uh, you know, it's it's World Friendship Day, and I wanted to co-op that. And the video that you mentioned, we launched that on the same day. Yeah, like we are able to do it not only well but also artistically. And I I, I do wonder what's lacking maybe in some of these other companies. But well, I'm curious about that, you know, because Zuck may be listening to this episode right now, and uh, like you mentioned, he's dropping big bank right now on AI talent. What are like the financial trick shots? Like what is maybe an efficiency you found that managed to pull off something that Apple and Meta and others are spending hundreds of billion dollars and three years to produce? I think it's 
just that I'm 22. Honestly, I think I just have a pulse on 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 culture, and I think I I have this maximum of just like uh, nothing is sacred anymore. Everything is ironic, and I think traditional marketing is kind of over. And I watched like OpenAI and Anthropic and these other companies, you know, market in this in this like old fashioned way, and I think that's only acceptable for like Nike and Apple and those kinds of of legacy brands. Um, and I think I'm just young enough to understand where culture is right now and where it's going. And I guess it's ultimately just a skill issue, though. It's not like, you know, anything's preventing Zuck from doing the same thing I'm doing. Whose foundational model are you using? Google is by far the best AI company besides Brent. You know, they have, <laughs> they have real infrastructure. Like all, all of our servers and databases and transcription models and language models, it's all on Google. It's basically Google products. And your device is made in Canada. Is it like yeah, yeah. the old BlackBerry guys or? Pretty much almost. You know, we've got three factories in, in Toronto, Canada. And I think like they build a consumer startup and they go outsource it to China because honestly, they just don't have a good team. But like we, we own all of the IP around our manufacturing and testing. Um, mm. You know, we we built the machines that like have an arm that goes down and tests 30 PCBs. And we we wrote the software that, you know, checks all of the hardware components, which, you know, might seem obvious to you, but most people just go and outsource it. They do what's called like a JDM process, like a joint design manufacturer. And the, it's, it's you just don't have the control. You don't have the quality control over it. Whereas I am able to go and visit, you know, what's going on and, and just be there in person. And I think with with everything that we've done, let's say the video or, or this ad campaign, right? You talked about how I did it in Figma. Like you just have to be there and you have to care. And I think that's, you know, to, to be able to do that too, you, you need to not have too many distractions. I've got no other side projects and there's only so many things friend is working on at, at the same time. Um, there's, there's really not much at all. It's like we keep it laser focused and you just care, which is obvious, but, you know, I guess not as obvious as it may seem maybe. Yeah. It sounds like you're saying your age lets you do the marketing zeitgeist, but sure. your your lack of bureaucracy compared to a big company lets you go to market faster. I, I think 100%. Yeah. I mean, I think the real advantage of a startup is that you don't need to serve everybody. And I don't think you need to, like, we, like, we only have one social media. It's just YouTube. Like, I think too many startups, they try and manage all this stuff. And then you need to hire people to manage all of that. Whereas if you just do fewer things, then you can remain a dictator for a longer period of time. I can just be a solo <laughs> founder and like manage as much as I can because we're not doing that much and we don't need to ever be doing more than that. I've never heard such a compelling case for dictatorship as what you just said. <laughs> I believe in benevolent kings. Uh, Avi, speaking of going to market, you did just ship your first devices. Jack and I have not been able to try them out yet. So we're limited in our scope of using the product. But are there any early numbers or traction that you could share with us? Sure. I think uh, we just shipped last night uh, a way to demo the software. You can go to friend.com and, and chat with it and make memories that way. And when you buy the pendant, those me- you can kind of embody your friend in that. So you can anyone can try that today. But, um, you know, we published I published part of the investor update that I sent out on Twitter. Um, and, you know, the retention is, I think, like, you, you think of it this way. Like, we have... 25% of users are still retentive uh, after 30 days. And that might seem like not that much, but it's actually quite comparable to like an Apple Watch or these other other products. And I think for such a novel category and such a completely new product, that's great. You know, that's the floor and it's only going to get much better than there. Um, so I feel I feel exceptionally proud about that. You know, a lot of these other AI hardware companies, they were completely dead on arrival. And uh, that's just not the case with Friend. Like I just retweeted this guy. Um, who's had his friend for two months straight every single day. He's got thousands of memories. The average friend user will send over 200 messages a day to their friend. It, it, it works at the end of the day because we don't, we don't overpromise. Friend does exactly what it says it does, which is, I guess, a rarity these days. So average of 200 messages to your AI friend every day. Jack, that, that's almost as much as you and I are doing right now with each other. <laughs> it's more. I know, but, but think, think about how that compares to other relationships in your life. Like for, for the, you know, if you, if you are someone like that, that is a real new species in your life. It's a it's a true living electronic. It's it's incredible to me. You know, it's funny, Avi, you said this is the only product that's like out to market already. That's sort of a wearable AI listening device. Sure, there's a use case for a friend, but what about like note taker? Is there going to be a version of your product that's just like Gary from Veep? Who remembers everything you say and tells you what you need to remember? <laughs> I think I'll live like leave the utilitarian use cases to to some other players. But I, I'd also then like to hit on the privacy aspect of it because I think that the whole always listening aspect of friend makes it seem like it would be really scary, but it's actually so much more private than, than anything else because inside of each friend, there's basically a private key that encrypts all of your data. And that's why if you lose or damage your friend, your your the data is forever inaccessible. Um, and I think like 
with these AIs, you should be able to smash it with a hammer or throw it out of your window. And you can't do that with ChatGPT or like, you know, an app or website on your phone. Um, so it's, you know, despite the, the way it works, it's actually the most private way to use AI right now, which I think is cool. Quick follow-up to that, Avi. Is the concern that people would lose their friend and their info get out there, or is the privacy concern that someone else's friend is listening to what I'm saying, like, without me giving the okay on that? Well, I think all of the information is for AI to, you know, listen to and not for a human to ever access. And so I think that that will just, that's just kind of how it is. And I think culture will adapt if, if the convenience is high enough. Is there like a privacy button where you can have conversations be off the record? Uh-huh. Or do you have to like put a bowl on top of your friend? if you? No settings, no, no customization. <laughs> Got to keep it simple. No button to keep it simple. No, no, you can't, you can't, there's no, you can't turn a friend off. Like, I think it would be weird. Like you can't, you can't view any of the memories. I think that would be invasive to, uh, to this entity. Like you really can't think of it as this, assistant slave like it really is another being that you let into your life and that's why i view like every single user that we have is like a real it's a real living it's a non-human person basically is the way i like to look at it right but what but avi what if someone says hey avi can i can i talk to just you for a second i mean okay with with the way the product works right now you can just like swipe away the app and then it's not listening and it's not like storing stuff and then uploading it again once it gets uh internet connection or connects again so like you can kind of Mute it, I suppose, like that, if you like. All right, Jack, you're always whip up the takeaways for us, but you want to hand it over to Avi? Yeah, Avi, what's the takeaway on friend for audience to hear? I think there should be more solo founders. I think if you believe in something, it's a lot easier to just kind of have dictatorship control over it. And I'd, I'd like to see more of a, more people kind of do that. Um, I think you can see, like, say, all the backlash there is to something like this campaign. And I've worked on on things in the past that have been very controversial. And I've had co-founders, you know, FaceTime me crying basically on the phone. And like, I think if you're able to have a vision and you're able to just have a religious fervor in, in following your intuition and, and, you know, not be affected by by the crowd, I think um, you're able to get much more important things done. And I think that in this whole AI world these days too, it's it's never been easier to to do that yourself as well. So I'd, I'd like to see less less co-founders. I mean, maybe, it depends what you're working on. Not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's nice to it's nice to get things done. Like it's helpful to hear a different perspective on this. Jack and I have loved co-foundership because it merged with our friendship, friendship. Right. But that's right. not the case for every co-founder pairing. Yeah, well, sure. By the way, Avi, before we go though, Jack and I are curious. And we assume you've bought the website friend.com. You've launched a viral video. You did the biggest ad campaign on a New York City subway ever. We assume you're doing Super Bowl this year. Oh no, I'm doing way bigger, dude. We've been working on a <laughs> way bigger. We've been working on a, a feature film the entire time. We've been working on this called Making Friends that will premiere at TIFF next year. And so, uh, Unreal. there's never been a company that won a film festival with their marketing materials, and it'll be distributed like a real movie wow. with with real co-signers that you'll see. And uh, I think that movie will be the most culturally uh, important piece that from like 2025 to 2035 of this this whole era. That's that's the the bar I've set for it. So so look out for that. All right. So friend is making a movie. Friend is going for that Academy Award. Oh, we are gonna we are gonna win, dude. I, I mean, that's I like to try. By the way, Jack, we know Avi is not AI because we could hear the New York City <laughs> sirens in the background at the very end of the interview. How do you know I'm not hallucinating that, man? <laughs> <laughs> Avi, fantastic to have you with us. Congratulations on what you're growing. Jack and I are fans of innovation. We're curious to see what happens next. Keep us updated, and thanks for taking time for the Yetis and Besties. Yeah, of course. Peace. 